Thanks for tuning in and welcome to this week's review of Grindhouse, directed by Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. It was called The Grindhouse. Theaters that played back-to-back movies featuring uncensored sexuality and hardcore thrills. Now, Tarantino and Rodriguez are bringing The Grindhouse back with two explosive feature films. In Robert Rodriguez, Planet Terror. Then... Buckle up, because a new kind of terror is coming at 200 miles per hour. Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. This car is 100% Death Proof. As everyone knows, this is a double feature except in Europe where they seem to be getting screwed by having them split up Kill Bill style. You know, this is a classic example where a business screws the art of movies. I recommend personally boycotting this movie if you get split up in your area. Unless this release is planned or they charge you 60% of the standard ticket price, this needs to be a double feature to be considered a full movie. One thing that needs to be emphasized is this film is pretty high on the gore, gross out aspect of the grindhouse tradition. You know, they really don't pull any punches in this movie, so without a rating system, it would have been scary to think of how far they would have pushed the envelope here. Don't even think about bringing a date on this movie unless you really, really love this kind of stuff. This is not for everyone. You know, I'll start this review by discussing the fake trailers. They have four fake trailers in the movie, and the movie starts with Machete starring Danny Trejo and Cheech Marin. You know, this is a great way to start the grindhouse movie on a very upbeat note. Then there are three other trailers between Planet Terror and Death Proof. Starting with Werewolves, Woman of the SS, followed by Don't, and Any with Thanksgiving. These trailers were hilarious, and quite frankly, were some of the highlights of the entire film. You know, there's something to be said about knowing these trailers are kind of a joke in a spinal tap sort of way, and being able to have fun with it. There's so much pressure to make big hit movies that making a mock trailer for a movie that may never be made can be done rather off the cuff. I say may never be made because I wouldn't be surprised at all if there was like a Grindhouse 2 or that one or more of these trailers actually became a feature. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a sequel, but I'd be very surprised if Tarantino or Rodriguez would be doing it. You know, I'd imagine Eli Roth or Rob Zombie would be more likely candidates for a sequel if there is one. If Grindhouse makes a killing at the box office, I'd be stunned if they didn't find a way to turn it into its own franchise. I mean, you can do it forever. You know, there doesn't need to be any continuity, so, you know, it could be any random plot or story as long as it has some sex and violence in it. You know, the Grindhouse film, you know, also may just die with this one, but the box office will be the final judge. You know, also, if they did actually make a sequel, the runtime would have to be around two hours or less. I just can't imagine them actually greenlighting another movie like this for over two hours again. You know, earlier on my channel, I posted a double trailer for Grindhouse asking people, you know, if you could only watch one of these movies, which one would you watch, Planet Terror or Death Proof? You probably already guessed from my top ten Kurt Russell films that I was really looking forward to Death Proof. Now, I must say, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect from these two films. You know, I'll say that, you know, if this wasn't a Tarantino Rodriguez film, I probably wouldn't have had much interest in seeing this type of movie. You know, while I've seen all types of horror movies ranging from the classics like, you know, Halloween, Night of the Living Dead, Friday the 13th, and, you know, Hellraiser, even the newer ones like Hostel. You know, I've even seen the most messed up films from Asia, like Itchy to Killer and Audition. You know, I have to say that for my money, Itchy to Killer is probably the most disgusting, disturbing film I've ever seen. You know, I was even watching a TV special on scary movies, and Rob Zombie even said that Audition creeped him the hell out. And I'd say that's quite an accomplishment. Kashi Miki was the director of those two movies, and he pushes the envelope like no other. And I knew going in this movie, there's going to be a lot of weight put on the shock factor, you know, pushing the envelope as far as it can be pushed without getting the dreaded NC-17 rating. Believe me, they pushed it pretty damn far. So I'll start my review of the double feature Grindhouse with Planet Terror. Now, the casting for this movie is excellent. Talk about a great cast of characters. You have Bruce Willis, Freddie Rodriguez, Josh Brolin, Michael Bean, Jeff Fahey, and of course, Machine Gun Lake herself, Rose McGowan. You know, this movie really had a large scope when it came to the amount of actors it had, as opposed to Death Proof, which really focused on less than 10 actors total. Now, the acting for this movie is really interesting. You have A-list actors acting like they're in a B-grade movie with intentionally odd 70s grindhouse dialogue. You know, this has to be kind of awkward for these actors to try to pull this off. You know, and the best part of both these movies is they really seem to have that 70s feel down, and this is definitely not as easy as it looks. The standout character in the movie is without a doubt El Rey, Freddy Rodriguez's character. This is by far the best character in either of the two movies. The execution of the Grindhouse feel for this movie is perfect. You know, even though I never saw a Grindhouse movie myself, you know, it still felt genuine. The missing reels part for both movies is pretty funny. You know, and I just think that uh, Ghost Rider the number 23 would have been much better if they lost the last reel for both of those movies. The ending of Planet Terror is actually really cool. You know, even though this movie seems as not intended to be a serious movie, more tongue-in-cheek, at least in my opinion, it was still a really good time. The weirdest part for me was actually staying in my seat after Planet Terror was over. I'm so used to kind of getting up after the movie. You know, I knew it was only half over, so I kind of had to gear myself up for Death Proof. 
And as you've probably seen from my channel, I'm a huge Kurt Russell fan. So this is what I was waiting for, a great movie starring Kurt Russell. I was not a big fan of Poseidon and 3,000 Miles to Graceland, to put it nicely. I was hoping this would kind of kickstart his career again. His last attempt at a kick-ass role was Soldier, and this is when he's 47 years of age. Now he's 56. Those good old days of Snake Plissken are pretty much all but over. And seeing Rocky at 60 years old it makes you know that you can only be young for so long. I mean, he had a great run as an action hero, you know, but we'll probably most likely see him land roles like Break Down a Miracle from now on. As long as he keeps acting, you know, I believe you always have a strong following, but his days as an action hero are pretty much over. The rest of the casting for Death Proof was pretty good. Several groups of hotties with Rosario Dawson and Rose McGowan leading the way. Definitely liked the first group of girls better than the second. The second group of girls are okay except for that mouthy character, uh, Kim, you know, played by Tracy Toms. It really wasn't her fault, but it's just her character got annoying after a while. You know, I know she was playing her part, but she just kept yakking and yakking and yakking. And I was kind of, be totally honest, I was kind of waiting for her stuntman Mike to shut her up. You know, and the funny thing about Death Proof is that it didn't have the same grittiness as Planet Terror. And what I mean by this is that, you know, Planet Terror looked beat to hell as far as the celluloid is concerned, you know, where long portions of Death Proof actually look clean in comparison to the rest of the film and the trailers. The acting is actually pretty good, you know, I, I am, I'm just not a big fan of how Stuntman Mike's demeanor changed at the end of the movie. You know, I wasn't really thrilled, you know, kind of how his character ended up. You know, I think it would have been better to keep him as a tough stone cold killer. You know, and I just thought it was a real strange change of direction, you know, on uh, Stuntman Mike. So the only other major criticism I have of Death Proof is the super long dialogue, you know, a la Reservoir Dogs. You know, in the beginning, they're talking about like a version and tipping. You know, when the, when the ladies were doing it, it just didn't seem like it was nearly as entertaining or as engaging as it was in Reservoir Dogs. And it was kind of like an homage to himself. Don't bother sending me any flame mail or flame post you know, regarding knocking this movie. You know, I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan. You know, where do you think I got the name Mr. Black? You know, it was all a joke taken from his movie, Reservoir Dogs. Why am I Mr. Pink? Because you're a faggot, all right? You four guys all fighting over who's going to be Mr. Black. <laughs> you know, so don't think for one second that I don't get his movies. I will say there were a couple of lulls in Grindhouse, mostly with Death Proof. And mainly with the round table lady discussion where the camera kept going round and round and, and also when they were trying to, you know, get that test drive with the white challenger. They're just way too long and dragging. I think they should have been shortened up a little bit to keep the pacing up. The plot for Death Proof is almost non existent. You know, Stuntman Mike is a serial killer that uses his car instead of uh, knives or guns or chainsaws to kill people. And in some ways, you know, this movie's designed as just a vehicle for making a classic car chase scene like the one in Bullet and uh, Vanishing Point, but, you know, which is fine, but sometimes we would really need to pick up the pace a little. I like both movies with the understanding that it was made as kind of a spoof or an homage to these older movies, these grindhouse flicks, but, you know, I just thought that if it wasn't for those two things, you know, I would have enjoyed the movie a lot more. You know, the execution is really good, you know, barring the two points I just mentioned. I love the 70s feel. The weird part about the movie is it was you know, it seems like it's designed to be, you know, from the 70s. You know, then you see one of the girls in Death Proof sending a text message. So, you know, I really found it strange that they would actually have someone sending in receiving text messages in a movie that seems so rooted in the 70s, and yet they're using modern technology. So that was one thing I did find kind of strange. You know, as I mentioned before, the ending was all right, but I just think Kurt Russell's character should have stayed consistent from beginning to end. You know, that's just my opinion, but I know I'm not alone on this one. The character change did make for some funny moments, but, you know, I still think it should have been done different. You know, while this movie isn't for people with a weak stomach, but as long as you're up for it, it is a pretty good time. For my overall rating, I give Planet Terror four and a half stars. And I give Death Proof four stars. And I give the fake movie trailers five stars. Don't forget to post your comments below on which movie you enjoyed more and which trailer you liked the most.